Hi, this is Dr. Karthik Manchala. Today, let's have a look at a small topic that is blood supply and fractures of the scaphoid bone. If you look at this diagram, the scaphoid bone, as you can see, articulates with the distal end of the radius at the scaphoid fossa. This is the scaphoid fossa. This is the scaphoid bone with the proximal bone, the waist, and the distal bone. This scaphoid is supplied by the radial artery via two branches. First is a volar branch which supplies the distal 20% of the scaphoid. Next is a dorsal branch which supplies the proximal 80% of the scaphoid. The peculiarity of this blood flow is that it is called retrograde blood flow. That is, the distal most part is well perfused whereas the proximal most part is less perfused. Mm -hmm. When there is a fracture of the scaphoid, which most commonly happens with the fall on an outstretched hand, the fracture can happen in three places. That is, the proximal pole, the waist and the distal pole. The most common fracture of the scaphoid is a fracture at the waist. That is, at this place, this fracture has a moderate risk of avascular necrosis. The next common fracture is that of the distal bone. That is where the perfusion is good. So, avascular necrosis or non-union is least common. The least common fracture is at the proximal pole. But the problem is as the area is less perfused, there are very high chances of avascular necrosis and non-union. So the questions most commonly asked are most common fracture of scaphoid that is at the waist and the fracture which has more propensity towards avian that is the proximal pole. Don't get confused. Answer well. Thank you.